Madison Bumgarner put on the greatest World Series pitching performance maybe ever. Barry Zito, Jake Arrieta, Brandon Webb, they all managed to take home the most prestigious pitching award in all of baseball at some point in their career. Hell, Tim Lincecum did it twice, and he won a few World Series while he was at it. But do you want to know what these five guys all have in common? It's not burgers and fries. They were all worth less Fangraphs wins above replacement than James Shields. You might not know James Shields, but he had a terrific career looking back on it. 145 career wins, over 2,000 career strikeouts, multiple Cy Young votes, an all-star nod, nine seasons in a row tossing over 200 innings. He was every team's dream for a bulldog top-of-the-staff ace, and he pitched in many big playoff games in every stage of his career. Normally, a player like James Shields would fall into the, oh yeah, that guy was pretty good category. He's not afforded such a luxury. Perhaps the most unfortunate home run in recent baseball history, perhaps the most unfortunate trade in recent baseball history. Missing his team's World Series victory by one year, the season after they fell short by one game. James Shields impressed impressive career slowly devolved into a series of unfortunate events not even written by Lemony Snicket. Today we're going to dive into it all, the good and the not so good. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure you subscribe to the Jolly Olive channel and ring the bell for all future notifications. James Shields originally signed as a 16th rounder out of high school and ended up needing serious shoulder surgery after just one season in the minors. While he lost some velocity, he still progressed steadily, joining the Devil Rays ball club in 2006 at age 24. Yeah, back then they were the Tampa Bay Devil Rays and they were still waiting for their first first winning season ever, let alone a first playoff season. By his sophomore year, though, he had already ascended to become one of the bright young starting pitchers in the American League. In 2007, his 5.11 strikeout to walk ratio ranked second in the league, and he also ranked top three with a minuscule 4.1 walk percentage and 1.1 whip. Because of his shoulder injury at age 20, he relied heavily on his changeup as his primary out pitch. What originally birthed out of necessity due to low velocity had now led Shields to greener pastures. By 2008, he was throwing more changeups than any other American League pitcher at 26.3% of the time. The rate a team notoriously known for not spreading out the dough to keep their best players gave James Shields a four-year extension after just his second season in the league, netting him $12 million guaranteed heading into the next season. That season specifically was special, as the Rays rebranded and saw a 31-win improvement en route to their first division title in franchise history. Shields and his co-ace Scott Casimir led the rotation with another 200-inning season and guided the Rays staff on their first playoff run ever. In that playoffs, he was a bulldog. He tossed 25 innings with a 2.88 ERA across four four starts on their run to the American League pennant. His rotation mate Matt Garza won ALCS MVP going 2-0 against Boston, allowing just two runs over a pair of dominant outings. In the World Series, he beat the Phillies with five and two-thirds shutout innings, leading Tampa Bay to a 4-2 victory and nodding the series at one win apiece. That game would be the last time a race starting pitcher would record a win in a World Series game as they ended up on the losing side of a gentleman's sweep against the Phillies. From there, both Shields and his team would take a step backwards, missing the playoffs in the next season and failing to advance past the ALD in the two years that followed. Shields continued to devour innings year in and year out, despite lesser performances in the next two seasons, including leading the league in hits, earned runs, and home runs allowed in 2010. That's what made his turnaround in 2011 all the more shocking. He ranked among the tops in the American League in every major pitching category, including top five in innings pitched, strikeouts, and whip. A huge contributor to his inning count was the fact that he tossed 11 complete games this season, and no one has beaten that total in the years since. For reference, all other Rays starters combined for just four that same year. Since 2000, only two pitchers have had a season where they tossed double-digit complete games. CC Sabathia did so during his Herculean run with the Brewers in 2008. In fact, I made a whole video about that run. James Shields is the other pitcher during his career best season with the Rays in 2011. The 11 he threw in that season accounted for nearly half of the 23 complete games he threw in his entire career. That rightfully earned him the nickname Complete Game James. It's really beautiful when nicknames just work out like that, you know? You know what's a bad baseball nickname? Hugh Losing Pitch pitcher Mulcahy, who went 45 and 89 in his career. That's just mean-spirited. These guys are supposed to be your teammates, your brothers, and they gave you the nickname Losing Pitcher? Also in my research, I found out two separate players had the nickname Boob. I'm not really sure what to do with this information, but I thought you guys should definitely know. This season was Shields' best shot in his entire career to win the Cy Young Award, but he ended up finishing at a close third place after the season concluded. Despite his monster effort, he was no match for arguably the greatest season of Justin Verlander's career, where he won the pitcher's triple crown en route to a Cy Young and an MVP award in the same year. His timing for his career year was pretty unfortunate, but I'm sure this didn't bother him too much at the time. This season kicked off a dominant four-year stretch where James Shields ascended to becoming 
one of the best starters in the American League, perhaps the best inning eater of anyone in the elite echelon. He led all pitchers in this four-year window in innings pitched and complete games, also placing in top six for punchouts and top 15 for earn run average. Following the 2012 season, the Rays flipped James Shields to an up-and-coming Kansas City Royals team in exchange for Will Myers and Jake Odorizzi, among others. This trade was pretty fair, which makes it far less memorable than the other trade that James Shields was a part of during his career. More on that later. James spent two seasons in Kansas City, arguably the best two-year run of his entire career. He started a league-leading 34 games in both seasons, getting both Cy Young and MVP votes. He led a strong rotation featuring Jordano Ventura and Danny Duffy, as the Royals won 89 games in 2014 and route to their first playoff berth since 1985. This was now two teams that James was a part of and two playoff droughts he had helped end. Unlike his last playoff run, Shields was ineffective in his October starts for the Royals, posting a 6.12 ERA across 25 innings and five starts, including getting the loss in two separate World Series games against the Giants. Shields tossed his only shutout that very season against the Giants in the regular season, but couldn't beat them when it mattered most. He tossed a quality start in Game 5, but it was fruitless with the Royals getting shut down by Madison Bumgarner. No, 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 no not the second time. The, the first time. The less famous time. By this point, Shields had just completed his ninth consecutive season pitching over 200 innings, a remarkable feat considering how modern baseball's pitchers had been pitching less and less with each passing year. In his first season, starters averaged about 175 innings a season. By 2014, they were down below 170. Yet every year throughout this window, Shields managed to surpass the league average. Since 2000, he's one of just three starters with double-digit seasons tossing 200 innings or more. He did so 10 times, Justin Verlander did so a dozen times trying for 13 this year, and Mark Burley tops all, doing it 14 years in a row. It seemed as though Shields was on his way to one of the more impressive careers from starting pitchers of this generation. The San Diego Padres certainly thought so, inking him to a very generous four-year, $75 million deal heading into 2015. If you remember, this was the offseason when the Padres won the offseason for the first time, when they added Justin Upton, Matt Kemp, and Craig Kimbrell, among others, and ended up winning the World Series right after. I might have made up the last part. Being a part of that free agent frenzy was definitely unfortunate, as was losing the World Series in 2014, only to see the team that he left win it all the next year without him. Shields tossed 200 innings again in his first year in San Diego, with a league average ERA and a 13-7 record. It was a fine first year, but no one remembers that, if we're being honest. What they do remember is the home runs he coughed up as a Padre. He lit up 33 home runs in 2015, then 40 home runs total in 2016, leading MLB in both seasons despite pitching in the cavernous home stadium of Petco Park. While 2015 was passable, he got off to a rougher start in 2016, posting just a 1-4 record through 6 starts despite a 3.23 ERA. He looked to turn a corner in a home start against the defending National League champions, the New York Mets. After coughing up a first-inning two-run bomb to Ioana Cespedes, Shields did his best to keep the ball in the park for the rest of his outing. The tough thing is, another feared slugger would step up to the plate in the top of the second. Up stepped Bartolo Colon. Hmm. For reference, Cologne's at-bats at this point had become must-watch television. Whether it was his helmet flying off on a wailing swing, him carrying the bat while running down to first, or the rare hit he'd stumble into, Cologne became the most entertaining hitter in baseball while also dominating on the mound. In the prior two seasons, he had gone 10 for 120 with 57 strikeouts to zero walks, and he entered this matchup looking for his first hit of the young 2016 season. I'll say this, if I was a pitcher facing Bartolo Cologne, I know that it's an easy out, but I'm a little bit terrified that he might get a hit against me. Little did he know, both he and James Shields were about to participate in the most replayed highlight of both of their storied careers. Because Bartolo Colon wasn't just about to get a hit. In a one-in-one -one count, both of these men's careers changed forever. For his first of the year. Oh, he drives one! Deep left field! That goes up to it! Back near the wall! It's out of here! Bartolo has done it! Bartolo Colon took James Shields deep for a two-run blast. And to add insult to injury, he outdueled him on the mound too with a quality start and a win. Shields fell to 1-5, then to 2-7 later in the month, with his last start as a Padre being a 10-run outing, resulting in a 16-4 loss to the Mariners. In year two of a four-year deal, San Diego was ready to cut bait, and they shipped him off for cheap to a White Sox team on the rise in need of some pitching. The James Shields contract became one of the most infamous in Padres history but only for a little bit. They got back an interesting prospect in the deal. I'm of course talking about Eric Johnson, a 2011 second round pick who was their number one overall prospect back in 2014. He had tailed off in the recent years, but still showed some potential. But he ended up just starting four games for the Padres, his last stint as a big leaguer. So safe to say the Padres basically got nothing out of this deal. Wait, what's that? There's two players in the deal? Well, who's the other one? Oh.
Yeah, the White Sox threw in a teenager named Fernando Tatis Jr. Okay, to be fair, I'm not sure anyone, including the Padres or the White Sox, realized the freak talent they had on their hands. But it doesn't change the fact that he has two silver sluggers, two top four MVP finishes, nearly 100 career home runs in just three years, and a 158 career OPS plus to this point. He'll likely win an MVP before it's all said and done. He's a franchise-altering piece that will be with the Padres for the next decade, one that I'm sure the White Sox would like to get back. Is this James Shields' fault? No, not at all. But what it did mean is that he would be endlessly compared to the skyrocketing Tatis for the rest of his career, and his last years in the league held few things that impressed. He was very bad in 22 starts for the White Sox after the trade, with an ERA well over six and an absurd 2.4 home run per nine rate. The White Sox were playoff contenders when he joined, and they fell to a losing record by the end of the season. He missed 10 starts the following season and was similarly ineffective. His best year on the South Side was his last year in the league in 2018, where he reached the 200 inning plateau again while also leading MLB with 16 losses. His contract came to a merciful end and after fielding no calls for his services, Shields' career went out with a whimper after 13 seasons in the show. And that was the book on James Shields. 2,500 innings, 2,200 strikeouts, a shade under 150 wins, 13 years in the league, 11 playoff starts, all boiled down to basically two moments, one of which wasn't even the guy's fault. Baseball can be a very cruel sport, as I'm sure we all know by now. Behind every pitcher who throws a pitch that ends up becoming an all-time replayed highlight, there is a career that that pitcher had leading up to it. Neftali Feliz versus David Fries, whoever that guy in the Nationals was that gave up the Bonds home run, and James Shields giving up a home run to Bartolo. Cologne. For Shields, that career was pretty damn good. Later on in 2020, he retired with the Rays and got his own happy ending. I'm glad he did, and I hope this video can serve as a silver lining to the unfortunate events that befell Shields' once promising MLB career. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video, and now a word from today's sponsor, Factor. Being an adult is hard. I know this firsthand, and sometimes I just don't have time in the day to get a nice meal cooked and make sure I'm taking care of myself. And if you're like me, you're probably gonna enjoy today's sponsor, which is Factor Meals. Factor's meals are fresh and never frozen, and they can be ready in just two minutes. Pop them in the microwave, get them out, and enjoy a tasty meal that's also pretty good for you. Choose from over 30 chef-prepared, dietitian approved weekly plans over at their website. Simply choose your meals from their website and enjoy fresh, flavor-packed meals delivered right to your door two minutes in the microwave, and they're done. The folks over at Factor were nice enough to send me one of their meals. I tried out the jalapeno lime cheddar chicken. It was two minutes in the microwave, and then it was done, hot and steamy, ready to go. Mixed everything together. The rice was fluffy. The chicken was so flavorful. It really tasted like a delicious home-cooked meal. And all it was was two minutes in the microwave. I couldn't really believe it. Absolutely delicious. Head to factor75.com right now and use code JOLLY50 for 50% off your first meal box order. This is a deal and a meal you're not going to want to miss. And thank you very much to Factor for sponsoring today's video.